Today we're doing lesson 7.8, Generate Equivalent Expressions. Essential question, how can you use properties of operations to write equivalent algebraic expressions? Okay, Casey, you ready? Okay. Um, equivalent expressions are equal to each other for any values of their variables. For example, x plus 3 and 3 plus x are equivalent. You can use properties of operations to write equivalent expressions. So if we, if we um, plugged in 4 for the x, x plus 3 or 4 plus 3 is 7, 3 plus x or 3 plus 4 is 7. So, sit up, please. Okay, um, we've already talked about the different properties, so I'm not going to go through this. Um, uh, that is something that you can read over if you're watching the video. Here we go. Nelson ran two miles. Go get a drink, okay? Put your hand over there. Nelson ran two miles, three laps, and five miles. The expression 2 plus 3L plus 5 represents the total distance in miles Nelson ran, where L is the length of miles of one lap. Write an equivalent expression with only two terms. So do you guys see that there's three terms in this problem? Okay, and they did a cursive L. Okay, that's what that is. It's not an E, it's a cursive L. Okay. So um, here's the original expression, 2 plus 3L plus 5. 2 plus 3L plus 5. Um, so what are the two like terms? Natalie, what are the like terms? 2 and 5, okay? So write that down. 2 and 5 are the like terms. Pick up your pencil. Write it down. Because they don't have any variable attached to them, right? Okay, good. Um, use the blank property to reorder the terms. Which property lets us move numbers, Ryan? Commutative. Commutative. So that's what we're going to write in this blank. Use the commutative property to reorder the terms. Reorder as in, look, the 3L was in the middle, but now over here, it's in the first place because it switched places with the two, okay? So the two and the 3L switched places, and now the 3L plus two plus five. Use the blank property to regroup the terms which allows us to regroup the terms. Briley? The associative. The associative. That means we're going to, you guys know that addition, when you've got addition, it goes from left to right, correct? So we have to group these two if we want to put them together. So the associative property, write that down. Property, uh, use the associative property to regroup the terms. So that means 2 plus 5 are going to be in parentheses. And if we do, so we have to do parentheses first. So what is 2 plus 5? 7. Seven. And then we bring down the 3L and the plus sign. 3L plus 7. So an equivalent expression for the total distance in miles is 3L plus Seven. Okay, so this is the expression we started with. This is what we ended up with. If we plugged in something for that L, we would end up with the same number. Okay. For example, let's plug in, let's make L equal two. Okay. So 2 plus what's 3 times 2? 9. Oh, no, 3 times 2 is 6. 6. So 2 plus 6 plus 5 equals 13, right? Okay, 
Now let's plug in two here. Three times two is six plus seven is 13. So either way we did that expression, we would get the same answer. All right, next page. The distributive property is my favorite one. Um, there's two ways that you can use the distributive property. So on this first one, um, we have 5a plus 8a minus 16. Um, so 5a, let's go through this one real quick. 5a is the same as a times 5, right? And 8a is the same as a times 8. So this equals a times 5. This equals a times 8. This e and then we bring down the plus sign, bring down the minus sign, and the 16. Now, what do you notice about both of those parentheses? What do they both have in them? Actually, yes, yes. What do they both have in them? A variable. Uh, what variable? A. 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 They both have A in them, right? So watch what you can do. When you have this and they want you to use the distributive property, you're going to, Luke, pull the A out of both. So pull out the A and then you just have times 5 and then a plus sign, and then if you pull out this A, you just are left with an eight. So A times five plus eight, and what is, um, what is five plus eight? 13. 13, A times 13 minus 16. A times 13 is the same as, A times 13 is the same as what? 13 times A. 13A. No, because I'm just making a point, okay? Um, um, because I'm just wanting to show you this part, okay? So um, 13A minus 16. So we end up with an easier way to have done it would have been to combine the like terms, right? 5a plus 8a is 13a, and then we have leftover minus 16. Okay, but they the reason we went through this long process is just so you would know the reason combining like terms work. So 13a minus 16. In that problem, we took the A out, right? In this problem, we're going to apply the 6 to both of those. So this is um, what I like about the distributive property because it makes a rainbow. Watch. 6 times Y plus 6 times 7. 6 times Y plus sign 6 times 7. 6 times y plus 6 times 7. What is 6 times y? What's the short way we write that? 6 y. 6y. And then what is 6 times 7? 42. Okay, so there is our answer. We took our 6, multiplied it by both of these in the parentheses, and then we ended up with 6y plus 42. So here's what we did. 6 times y plus 6 times 7 is 6y plus 42. So the expression 6y plus 42 is equivalent to 6 times y plus 7. Okay, so this is one way to do it. The other way is to pull something out. Okay, 12a plus 8b. 
are there any like terms there? There's a coefficient and a variable, and a coefficient and a variable, right? We can't add or multiply or anything those things together. What we can do is find the GCF and pull it out. So what's the greatest common factor of 12 and 8? Katana, what's the greatest common factor of 12 and 8? Way it help her out. Nope, you're, think, you're thinking uh, least common multiple. Greatest common factor. Jenna? Four. Four. Very good. So the greatest common factor of 12 and 8 is the biggest number that you can divide them both by. So now let's pull a 4 out of each of these terms. Okay? 4 times, what do you multiply 4 times to get 12? 3. Three. Two. A. So 4 times 2. 3 is 12, but we got to stick an A on it, right? What do we multiply 4 times to get 8? 2. 2, and then we stick the B on it. Very good. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So here we go. We took out the 4 from both of those, and we got 3A and 2B. So what we're left with is 4 times 3A plus 2B, and we just put the 4 right next to the parentheses and write 3A plus 2B in parentheses. Um, it says get a different expression that's equivalent to 12A plus 8B. What else could we take out that's not necessarily the greatest common factor, but what else could we pull out from 12 and 8? Chase? 2. 2. So if we took the 2 out, what do you multiply 2 times to get 12A? 6A. 6A. Plus sign, what do you multiply 2 times to get 8B? 4B. 4B. Do you guys see how we're coming up with these equivalent expressions? Okay different ways to write the same expression. Okay, nice job. All right, here we go. We're gonna do six more problems together and then I'm going to turn you loose to do some. Um, this one was a little trickier um, because it's got a mixed number in there, but don't let that blow your mind. It's three and seven tenths R minus one and five tenths r. Do you see some um, like terms, Natalie? Uh, the variable r. The variable r, exactly. So both, so what we can do, since both of them have an r, is just do the problem. Three and seven tenths minus one and five tenths. Remember, you start with the fraction side first. What's 7 tenths minus 5 tenths? 2 tenths. 2 tenths. And then 3 minus 1? 2. 2. So that means an equivalent expression is 2 and 2 tenths R. Okay? So that one we just did the work. 2 and 2 tenths R. Is there something else that would be equivalent to that that you could do? about this guy. Oh, really? Is it equal to one fifth? Yes, exactly. You could also do two and one fifth R. Nice job, Riley. Okay, so there, either one of those is equivalent. Okay. All right. Next, we have 20A plus 18 plus 16A. What are the like terms in there, Ellen? Uh, the, the variable A. The variable A. So we've got 20A and 16A that we need to put together. So let's do this. Let's bring this plus 18 over here. Now they're together. What's 20A plus 16A? 36A. 36A plus 18. So here's what we're going to do. Write 20A plus 16A plus 18. We 
which is 36A plus 18. And that's all that you have to do on that one. 36A plus 18. Is there something you could take out of 36 and 18? What's the greatest common factor? Ian? 18. 18. So watch, you could also, this would be equivalent to. Okay, so 18 um, times 2a is 36a and 18 plus 1 is 18. We don't have to go that far, this is all we have to do. But um, I just want you to understand there's multiple ways to find equivalent representations. Yes? I don't have to do the next one. Okay, so next we have 7s plus sine 8t. Notice my t's have a little tail on them so you can tell them apart from a plus sign. So, Ian, what do we need to do? Uh, move the 10s. Uh, behind the 7s and exist the next step. Flip flop these two, right? So if we do 7s plus 10s plus 8t plus 12t. Now can we do it pretty easily? What's 7s plus 10s, Skylar? 17s. Very good. And Avery, what's 8t plus 12t? Twenty T, right? You can stick that T on it. Very good. Okay. All right. So here's what we're gonna write: seven S plus ten S plus eight T plus twelve T, and that is seventeen S plus twenty. Okay, so those are just combining like terms. Then we have um, use the distributive property to write an equivalent expression. So we have eight times H plus 1.5. When you see them like this, think of the rainbow, okay? So we're gonna multiply eight times H and then eight times 1.5. So eight times H plus eight times 1.5. Stick parentheses around those. Eight times H is eight H plus sign. Eight times 1.5, what's that equal? Pick up those calculators, plug it in. Eight times 1.5. 12. 12. Yeah, I started to do a point by trying to fix it. Okay, eight H plus 12. So here's what you're gonna write. Do a little rainbow. Eight times H plus eight times 1.5. Put parentheses around your grouping, and then we get 8H plus 12. That is the answer. I'm gonna put a box around it. I forgot to do that up here. Put boxes around my answers. Okay, on the next one, we're using the distributive property to share or to hand out. What do you see that both of these have in common? I want you to use a word that begins with a C that we learned recently. Natalie? The coefficient four. Very good, the coefficient four. So that means we can take four out of both of these. If we take four out of both of these, what are we left with? M plus P, right? So this is all we have to do. Put that four out front. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna pull out the four and then put M plus P. And that's it, actually. Okay. All right, um, 3a plus 9b. What do you have, or what do you think that we
we could pull out of this. What could we pull out? Natalie? The greatest common factor. The greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor of three and nine, Ashlyn? Three. three. You could pull out a three. So if we take out a three, and what do you multiply three times to get three? One. And do we need to put the do we need to put the coefficient one? Nope, we don't have to. Okay. So a plus sine. What do you multiply three times to get nine b? Three b. Okay. So we pull out a three. We multiply that times a plus three b. All right, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, any questions?